tell me everything. So that must stop now. Okay, we are live and we are on air. So everybody's going to need to be with me as I show you on the front here. All right, so let's all sit down. No one must come to me because I can't concentrate when there's a lot of people telling me stuff and walking around. Okay, we are live. Welcome to today's lesson. Boys and girls, the, gray, the, the learners that I mentioned will be going through to the challenge at the Dominican school. I mentioned that earlier, so I'll just show you what I have here. And I'm just going to show you, we haven't completely worked out what we're going to do, but I've written down some stuff over here that will help you guys to understand what we're going to be presenting. And we got Matthew and a few others, a bit small. I'm putting it in Notepad, maybe because I know we've been doing HTML and Dakota loves Notepad a lot. I also like it. Um, it says a Scratch lesson, so we're going to use Scratch. That's going to be our application we're going to use, and we're going to try to find our way through a maze. So we're going to have a little object that's going to try to find. It's going to bump against the walls all by itself moving through the maze, and the whole idea will be to construct a collection of objects who move according to given rules. So when they hit against the side, they'll bounce. They'll bounce in different directions. And we'll have millions and millions of little red balls and blue balls. And then we'll capture how quick it takes the red balls to get out of the maze compared to the blue balls. And then we'll know that there's a mathematical capture collection of data. So we're going to have historical data of the movement is to be recorded in real time. So we'll use some sort of graph used in a mathematical demonstration of which on the 15th of September, Aidan, Trent, Matthew, Donia, Jordan, and Leighton will be presenting at the Dominican Challenge. So for today's lesson, we construct the maze, and we're going to possibly at this stage only have that our little object will move through the maze. But at a later development, we're going to make that the object moves by itself. And every time it gets through the maze, another one will come and try to get through each time. And we're going to be recording the mathematics involved, how long it took, how fast it took, how many bounces it bounced. And we'll do a whole lot of maths in, in that whole process. So to just get started, that's all we're going to do. And I think you guys can enjoy today's lesson. As I take this off, we'll get started. All right just to let you guys know what's going on. All right, so let's begin. So the first thing we need to have is our Scratch Cat over here moving around. And I'm going to make Scratch Cat big, small. Let's make him a bit bigger. Okay, that's about as big as I need to be. So I need to get a background. So what I'm going to do now is find a background. So let's go to the internet. <clears throat> And I'm going to find a maze. Or we can even draw one. So let's do that. If I go to the background over here, click over there, and you can see this button over here. It says Paint New Backdrop. So I'm going to click over there, and I'm going to make nice thick lines. I'm going to draw like that. And then I'm going to draw a line going there. I'm making a maze that this object needs to get through. So we're going to go like that. To there. And you guys can build your own maze. Now, for the purposes of this activity, I'm just going to go and take my maze, and I'm going to remove this one, and I'm going to go and construct one, but you and go find one on the internet. I think it makes it a little easier for me. But you guys can build a little maze over here, and that's where your object's going to try to find its way out. We could make a very simple one, so it's a, like this. Actually, that would be not really great. If I go get a line like that. I could put a line over there, make it even a little bit skew. That doesn't matter. 
And then I'm going to have a line over here and a line there. And I'll make this the start. So when you go over here, this is going to be the starting point, And it's got to try to get out of this maze. So if I put a line there. Another line there. We'll put a little line there. You guys can make it really, really look interesting. Make your maze very interesting. All right, so we've got it all over here already. So if you look at our maze, my little scratch cat's over here. He's always going to start in the middle over there. Okay. I'm just wondering. I want to make this a bit bigger. Make it a bit bigger. Now make it a bit bigger this way. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit bigger. And you're going to see when I make my scratch cat, I'm going to make my scratch cat a bit smaller. So if I go over here, look over here, this scratch cat I'm going to make smaller. Now, look at how you move scratch cat. You just drag him. But I'm going to make him into a really small scratch cat. So I'm going to go over here. What does that say? Grow. And these arrows pointing inward say shrink. So if I click over there, click on Scratch Cat, look, he's getting smaller. So I'm just going to make him really small. One more. And that should do it. And I'm going to move my Scratch Cat. He's starting over there. So he's going to try to find his way out. And he's going to get to this point over here. But when we do our mathematical activity, you're going to find that it's going to be we, our scratch cat will be lots of little red balls and blue balls that operate according to different mathematical principles. Like the red balls might move up, down, left, right, but the red balls can move up, down, left, right, and diagonally. So we'll, it'll be all mathematical, and that's what we want to do. So now we've got this set up. Okay, let's put in a start point. So we go over here. I'm going to go with a, a start point, and we'll bring in that at the moment to show that that's the start point, and then the ending is going to be over here, over there. So I'll just bring in one of these. So I'm going to go with, no, I don't want to use one of those. Is there a flag? Let's have a look. Things. Things. I'm going to use this ball. That's fine. I really, you can even draw or paint your own one, but I'm going to go that when you get to the end, this little ball is going to indicate that you've gone to the end. Oh, that's even better. I've taken my ball away from the scratch cat. So if I make my scratch cat a bit bigger, it's no longer, it's a little ball. That's even better. So then my little ball is going to bounce around. It's not very clear. So if you look at the ball, it doesn't look so clear. So but that's fine. I'll just go with that yellow ball. Let's just put it over there and move my ball over there. So we've got a little yellow ball trying to find its way out. Now we're going to go to the next part of the game. And we're going to move, get our little scratch cat moving around or our little ball moving around to try get out of there. So. Ivan is not here. He's not in this room. Sorry. Okay. All right. So what we got is our scratch cat is no longer there. If I click on him, then he's there. So we got our scratch cat and there's our scratch cat. Look at that. If I go like that, do you see our scratch cat's animating? It's like he's moving. So we're going to use that. I'm going to just make him smaller. That's a bit better. Right, guys. And when he gets outside over here, it'll say I've won. Okay. I've actually made a, a separate costume. That's not the right thing. So I should have made a new scratch, a new a new one over here. So if I go to things, choose a, I'm going to choose the blue ball. There we go. 
So there's different costumes. And you Sprite, I want a new Sprite. So Apple, I'm really making a mess. I'm a bit old, eh? With the, when the Apple gets hit over here, then you know you won. So that's the ending. And I'm going to take these costumes away that I put in there. And I'm going to just remove those ones. Delete and delete that one. So my little scratch cat's going to try to get to the Apple. That's the whole idea, to get to the Apple. Objective of the aim is to get to the end of the maze to get to the Apple. So let's go and see how we can create this program step by step. And we're going to go to our Scratch Editor. We're in our Scratch Editor. And we're going to, first of all, the first thing you need to do is import a maze. Which you guys already can find that we've, we've built a maze, our own maze, this maze over here. So if I wanted to use, I can use that maze as well. But if you wanted to import a maze, then you're going to need to go and find one on the internet. Okay. Is everyone with me at the moment? Okay. So once you've found a maze, then what you do is you're going to bring that maze into your Scratch game. I'm just going to go and take this away. Wow, I'm getting old with Scratch, eh? All right, so we've got our maze and our Scratch Cat, our backdrop. If you wanted to bring in a maze, you can easily do that as well. Okay, so we're going to now we're going to just use this maze that we've got over here. Okay, we could have brought a maze in as a sprite. Aiden, well, I'm, I'm really uh, I've got a bit. How do I get this away again, guys? I'm trying to work out how to get this away. Which one? This one. No, but I want to get rid of this backdrop. I've just forgotten. It's such a long time ago. So if I select everything, can I just go like this? And then I go there. Delete. Aha, there we go. All right, so that's... Hey. Okay, you need to go sit down because we're busy with a lesson. You can't come to me, guys. Right, so I'm, the reason why I'm taking this away is I'd rather use something that I can find on the internet. So let's have a look how we do that. We're going to find something on the internet, rather. So let me just show you how we do that. So I'm going to bring in the internet, and I'm going to write in maze. I think it'll be better to find one on the internet because my one's not so great. Now, when you want to look for an image, we go to mall. I'm going to go to images. I'm going to go mall. I want a black and white image. So I'm going to go with tools, type. Line drawing. And look over here. Maze. I want a labyrinth. Let's go to M-A-Z-E, maze. Look at all these ones. Okay, the, I'm going to find a fairly simple one. That's an interesting one. Look at that one. So if I go over here, that looks quite good. Right, so let's have a look if I can get it nice and big. So I'm going to go save image as, and let's just save it to our desktop. So I'm going to call this one maze for game. Maze for game. And then I'm just going to save it. It's a PNG file. Right? Now I'm going to just close this, and I'm back with my scratch cat. But I, I prefer that maze. To the other one. So I'm going to go and bring it into my Scratch Cat. 
I'm going to bring my maze as the background to this. I'm going to upload the image. Okay. And I'm going to bring it into this. Now, you're probably wondering, how do we upload the image? Right. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to do that. Go over here. Look over there. I'm going to bring my maze in as a sprite. These children are walking in and out. Now stop that. You can't come in here anymore. Okay, so I've got a desktop. Guys, coding is very complicated. We can't have people walking in and out the whole time. And I'm going to look for my picture that I've just brought into desktop. You guys have got much better eyes than I have. I'm going to scroll down and look very, very carefully. There it is. So if I click on that, there, there it goes. So it's in my picture over here. I just need to make it a bit bigger. And that's what I need to do. So I'm going to go over here. And let's go see costumes. I'm going to make that a bit smaller. And look, there's the selection tool. There's probably a better way of doing it. Selection tool. I'm just going to go over everything. And then I'm going to bring my maze as big as I can possibly bring it. I might even stretch it that way so that it takes up all the space like that. That's going to improve it. And I think that should do. And I want to move it a bit down. Look, so it fits nicely. So if you see my game, it's going to look. That is a, a lot better. So here's the start. And that's the end. So I'm going to try to get my little scratch cat moving in this maze, moving from there to there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to make everything a bit bigger. I can't even see scratch cat. Let's just see where he is. He's there. He's over there. I'm not seeing him. He's so small that I can't see him. Just put scratch cat. Yeah. If I move this, wow, why am I not seeing him? I've got to put my. Okay, so I have to move this. Yes. Okay, how do I get him in front of the picture? Just order. Let's look at edit. Just want to see how we can move it down. Make it smaller. But look, if I move it there, you can see there's my scratch cat. Okay. If I move my scratch cat there, look, he's going underneath the picture. Ah, look, if I take my scratch cat like that and I activate him, now he's on top. Okay, so there we go. And now he's on, not on top. It's because I'm selecting. I must get this one first. Okay, I'm going to just move my scratch cat a little bit there. Now it'll work. Watch. Uh, I've got to practice a little bit, guys. But there's my scratch cat going to start over there. But I'm going to put him a little bit inside here. And I'm going to make him even a little bit smaller because I want him to bounce around in there. So let's go a little bit smaller. It's going to, I, I want him almost to look like a little dot. Okay, so he's over there. He's still going to struggle to get through that space over there. So let's make him even a little bit more small. Wow, he's like a little dot. Okay, let's see if he'll go through there. Will he get through that space? I'm going to even make this a bit bigger. Okay, let's go make this. I'm just going to make that smaller, select everything. Guys, I'm taking a while, but I'll just make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to move it up like that and bring this one down. Just to get everything a bit bigger, otherwise my scratch cat's not going to work. So you guys have got to play around until you get it right. Okay, so that should do. Let's just see if that works. Okay. 
I'm not seeing my scratch cat, so I know that the way to get my scratch cat is I've got to move this and then bring scratch cat in afterwards. Yeah, I think you're right. So if I grow my scratch cat, let's just grow him nice and big. And only later on we'll make him smaller. That's really smart of you. Just get him really big. And then we can work with him and then later on just change our scratch cat to be, make him smaller. All right, that should do. Hey, what do you think? Just going to put him over there. You guys are probably know scratch a bit better than me. will know why it's doing this and just to get our scratch cat on top. Right, so scratch cat, getting him on top is a bit of a struggle. But I think he could be, that could do. Okay, he's going to start over there. Over there. Let's make him start over there. Okay, now we're going to make, that's a little bit of a job, uploading our image. And now we're going to go, remember how you uploaded this? You went to this over here. You went and searched for the, the maze, and then you brought it in and made it as a sprite. You can see he has a sprite. Our maze is a sprite. Okay, we'll shrink our scratch cat in a minute. Okay, so we're going to make our scratch cat. Can I move my scratch a bit? Make him a bit smaller. Okay, let's get him smaller. I'm going to make him a bit smaller. And you guys know we're going to bring in the win click event, eh? That's always, Matthew you used to always tell us, let's go to the scripts and events when click events. What's the next bit of code we're going to bring in? The forever. What is that? And that's in the control section, the forever loop. So let's look for it. Forever loop. Make everything nice and big so you guys can see. So we've got our little scratch cat and we're going to go forever. There's a loop going around forever. So this is going to repeat itself continually. So we're grabbing the forever loop. Right, so it's going to go around. It starts over here. It reads our code. And we're going to bring in an if statement. Okay, so we're going to bring in if. And look over here. If something is as it is, then something must happen. So we're bringing in a little bit of logic. The if block. Okay, now we're going to bring in from the light blue, the sensing. So go to sensing, and then we're going to look for key space. Okay, our key space, look over here, key space pressed. That person who is shouting, would you please leave? Key space pressed. Go and put that in. Right, so we got our key space. Now, we all know that key space is your keyboard. Now, remember in our maths demonstration, it's going to be automatic. Computer will choose how it moves according to certain laws. Okay, and this is going to, this key space is going to move our cat sprite. Can you see the cat sprite is active? So when we click the key space, something's going to happen. Okay, we're going to bring in motion. And now we're going to change on the X axis. Now, look over here, it says motion. My eyes are really bad. Change X. We're going to go on the X axis. So that means we're moving this way, guys, across. We're not moving up and down. That's on the Y axis. We're moving across by 10. Okay. So if I had to play my code, now watch. If I go over here and I play my code, watch the little spray a scratch cat. If I click on the, over here, watch. If I press on the left arrow key and I press on my scratch cat, it should move. Oh, it's not working. All right, so we'll work out why this, that's not happening. If we press the space key, oh, guys. 
I was pressing the left key. So watch. If I press the space key, it'll work. If I press the space key on my space bar, look, there it goes. See, it's going. Look at my scratch cat. Oh, it got stuck there. Dakota, do you see? Okay, so if I start again, go back and move my scratch cat to the start. He's moving. But it's moving with the space key. That's wrong. So I want to make that he moves with the... Which key do I have if I want him to move this way? The left key. So we're going to go with left arrow key. There, look, it says left arrow key. Choose that. When we press the left arrow key, he's going to move left. And on the X axis. So he's moving in an X direction. I think he was going a bit too fast, eh, hey guys? So we're going to change that 10, and we're going to make that 10 into a... If we're moving in the left direction, look at this, guys. If we're moving our scratch cat this way, he mustn't move. It must be... This is positive, eh? 1, 2, 3, up to 250, I think it is. This is negative. So watch what, what we must change this number to a negative number. So let's change it. Minus four. Let's make it minus five. Minus four or five. Change that, guys, to minus five. Right, so we're making that he moves. And you'll see, look, if I play it, look, he doesn't move so fast now. Click on the... And if I move left, look how slow he's going. He's not going so fast anymore. He's much better. My scratch cat is going... At a more appropriate speed, the velocity, the movement of my scratch cat. So the negative four will show which way he goes. Okay, now we're going to copy, duplicate that if statement. So the if part of it, watch what we're going to do. We're going to put our mouse over here, our cursor, right click, and look what I'm doing. What does duplicate mean? Copy. So let's duplicate it. We're going to bring that in there. So we've got that bit of code in there. And some of you already know what we're going to do now. When we've got the left arrow, what must this one be? That one should be the right arrow. And we'll make this not minus 4, but 4. Just positive 4. So it'll be 4 or 5. Let's make it 4. Okay, you can change yours. Now let's test our code. Look, there's my little guy. Why are you running there, little guy? Okay, let's go back. Move him back over there to the starting point. And I'm going to make everything big. He's starting over here. And watch when I go on to the arrow. Sorry, on the flag. I move the left arrow. Look how he's moving. Move the right arrow. Look how he's moving. So he's moving left and right on the X axis. But he's not moving Y on the Y axis yet. We'll get that right in a minute. Okay, so now we know that he's moving on the x-axis and the y-axis with the right arrow and the left arrow, minus 4 and positive 4. That's movement on the x and y, x-axis. Now we need to get the y-axis. Now you guys know, look at how I'm going to duplicate this. Duplicate, and I'm copying both those if statements. And I'm going to bring this one in here. And this one, you guys know, is the up arrow and the down arrow. And we know it's not going to be on the x-axis. It's going to be on the... So these, this code's wrong, hey, guys? That code's wrong. Look, take this out. That's wrong. And that's wrong. So we have to bring in change y. Look there. There it is. Change y. And I'm going to go... This one, this way, and up and down is y-axis. Up arrow, down arrow. And I'm going to duplicate that and put that one in there. So we got, I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. You can see a bit better. And some of you already know what it's going to be when we move up and down. So let's just go a bit smaller. And now we know that when he goes up, guys, up is going to be 
positive. So if I go there, up is positive. When he moves this way, it's plus and down is negative. So let's go to this one. Positive. That'll be four. And what must this one be? Minus four. Now remember when our maths game is done for the demonstration, it's going to be automatic. In other words, we will not be manipulating our little sprites. The computer will do it randomly, trying to find its way through the maze. And we'll be collecting data as it does that, like a little mouse trying to find its way out of a labyrinth. Okay, let's test it. And we'll just see if I make it big. If I press the flag, green flag, left, right, it's working. And now I'm going to test up and down. Up arrow, look, it's working. And down arrow. So I've got a, a sprite, but I must make that he can't go past the black. I've got to make that my sprite cannot move past the black lines. So we're going to have to bring in something there that he can't get past the black lines. Let's just move our sprite into position again. And we'll bring in that part of the code now. Because we don't want him that he, every time he walks over the lines. You saw how my sprite was just moving over the lines. If I go over there, you can see, look, it's just moving over the lines. I don't want my sprite to go across the lines. He has to be moving in a way that he doesn't cross the lines. Okay, guys, this red stop button stops the code, eh? It just stops the code and starts everything. Okay, so I'm going to make, this is the starting position. Now, when you want to find your starting position, where your sprite starts, look over here. Look over there. Look at the position. What is that number reading? Look over here. What's that number? X, what's this number over here? Read that number to me. X91. Okay, so that's going to be our starting position. So let's bring that in. Okay, we're going to bring go to. Can you go to X? Read it to me. 48. And uh, the Y position, so we repeat, minus 99. So now our sprite's going to start always there. So look, if I move over here and I press the red, this red circle, look, it moves to play. It go, when I start, it goes to that position. Press, if I move him over there, I press the flag, it starts. But Matthew, I want to put him over there. What is that position? X, what? Okay, where is which one? But I want this one over here. Go to X, Y. What is this position read here? Look over here, read this, what those numbers are there. X53. 63. Okay. Now, read it now. Okay, X49. And the other one was? Minus 88. Minus 88. Okay, so let's see if it works. Go over there. Oh, now it's going there. Matthew? Okay. It doesn't matter. We'll just make it that it starts. Let's just see if we can get it there again. There, guys, it's 44. Look, what's that? Is it 48? X60. Okay, then maybe let's try to change this. 60. I'll test it. Okay, 60 is over there.
So I want my guy here. Where is it? Okay, so let's bring that in. Okay, let's move this one away. I just want to get that one away. Okay, let's test if it's going to be right. Hey, Matthew, good. So we've got 82 minus 113. Okay, so our scratch cat is now at this location to start our game. Did you guys get what Matthew just showed me? That you go, that would show the actual location. So if I move him there, Matthew's saying that that shows you the actual. So you can just drag that in and it'll bring the actual location of your sprite. Okay. I want our guy to look, our scratch cat to move. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to every time we move our key, our press our key, we want our scratch cat to look like he's moving. So watch. So every time I press minus four, we're going to go to looks, looks, change costume. And let's see, I can't see change costume. Is that, is that switch costume? Next costume. Where's next? Co is that next costume? Right. So I'm going to bring in next costume. This one I'm going to go next costume. Next costume. And next costume. Now watch our sprites. Watch how he looks. Guys, you'll see. Look, if I go to there. Now watch when I move him. Look how he's moving. Whoa, what's going on? He's going a bit crazy. He looks a bit crazy. He's acting a bit crazy. Okay. Let's see why he's doing that. Next costume. I just want to see my Scratch Cat's costumes. Uh, we got that one. I want it to go like this. Oh, uh, look, guys, because he's jumping around. So then this one, let's just move it up there. I don't want him to jump around like that. So I want that one and this one to kind of fit together. I've been messed. Look, that's better. Can you guys see? Okay, so watch him now. If I go here, watch my scratch cat. If I press this, it's going to look like he's moving. Look, can you see it? Like he's, it's like he's running. Okay, so it gives him greater, looks more animated. So it's more exciting that the game gets, and I'm moving him, and he's like moving. And my scratch cat's kind of moving. There we go. Gives him, makes him more lifelike. So that's working. So we got like our scratch cat working. I was very silly that I changed the position of my scratch cat. So let's just get to the clicking in the beginning, our starting position. Uh, you guys can't come in and out while we're doing coding. It's just not on. Right, so now we're going to go to move a little bit further on. We've changed our costume so that our scratch cat has got a little bit of animation. Everything's working quite well at this stage. You guys must study this afterwards and practice, and our scratch cat looks really good. I don't want him to go through these walls. Hey, eh? look at my scratch cat. Every time I press my scratch cat, I can make him walk through the walls. That's got to stop. So we're going to make that he can't go through the black walls. Can you sit down, please? Otherwise, okay, well, you please don't come to coding if you guys are going to walk in and out. This is nonsense. All right, please. Okay, we had people walking in and out the whole day today, and it's not on. Okay, so watch. We're going to show you what to do now. I'm just going to click my scratch cat. He's in the beginning position. And we're going to bring in the sensing part. If touching color. So watch now. We're going to bring in if touching color. So if you go to scripts. Make this a bit smaller, if, and we're going to go bring in an if statement. If, then we want to do something. 
So we're going to bring it in after the next costume. Dakota, look over here. After the next costume, if it's touching, and that'll be with sensing. So if you look at the sensing part, Matthew, you've got better eyes than me. You've got to help me, hey? If touching, color. Ah, there we go. Right. If touching, and now we want that black color. So let's just make it a bit bigger. If we are touching, just make this a little bit smaller. That color, if touching, now I'm going to take that color over there. There. If touching black, I'll make it bigger. If it's touching the black, then we're going to make it do something. So we'll bring that bit of code in. If touching on the black part, then we'll make our little, little guy move in the opposite direction or something. So, yeah, so we'll make it change the negative four. We'll make it move a little bit in the opposite direction. So we're going to then make the motion, and we're going to change the that by the opposite direction. So watch. If we change X, I'll duplicate that. No, I don't want to duplicate that. I'd rather go to the motion part. Motion, change, X. Okay, so we'll go over here. Change X by, yeah, it's minus 4. I'm going to make it minus 2. Uh, two. Yeah, so I'm going to make him just jump a little bit back. Okay. I don't know if that'll work. Maybe four, four was making him move too fast. So I'm going to make it minus two. I don't know if that's going to work. And then we'll move down here to this one. And we're going to go this one, four. And we're going to bring in this if statement. We're going to duplicate. Bring it in over here. If touching on the black, bye-bye. And that one is minus two. This one must be minus two. And we're going to change this one as well. We're going to bring in an if statement. Over here. If touching. Control. If touching. On the color of black. Let's go with that color. If touching black, what must this one be? Change. Y. Hey, look, there's the Y. Change Y by what? What are we going to make this one? Minus 2. And then we're going to copy this. Duplicate, and we're going to just move down a bit and bring this in over here. And then I think it'll work. And this one must be two. And I'm going to test my code, guys. Hopefully, it's going to work. Right, there's our start. Now, look, look, he's hitting against the black. Okay, if I go up, oh, he's crossing over. I've got to make that he moves minus four. And if I go there, it's, uh, I see my colors might not be so great. So, mm. it'll be all black. Okay, so guys, if I change this, I'll just try and make it minus four and four. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Let's just see. This one will be minus four. Minus four. Matthew, you must tell me if I do a mistake because I can't see so good. My eyes are getting worse. Four minus four. This one will be minus two. Minus four. And then this one will be just four. Okay, let's just test that. I don't know if it'll work. But I think Matthew's right that there's a gray. Dakota's also mentioning that there's gray here. So if you, if you, it's not really black. So if I go over here, look, oh, there he's getting stuck. Guys, look, it's working. So he gets stuck. So if I go over here, look, oh, whoa, okay. Mine's working. 
but my scratch cat's still too big. So he's getting stuck, and he's getting stuck. He can't get through there. Look, he's bouncing against that wall. So I need to now make my scratch cat smaller. So I'm just going to make this bigger, and then everything will work. So scratch cat, shrink him. I want him almost like a little dot. Let's try one more. And then I'm going to try my game. Okay, let's see if that'll work. Okay, look, guys. Look at Scratch Cat. He's so small. If I create, I'm going to go over here. Look. Now I'm going to go. Hey, you can see it's working. Now if I hit, oh, he's just missing. And I, if I go against the wall, if I, look, it's getting stuck. He can't get past. He's, it's working. So when Matthew and the, these guys present on at the Dominican Challenge, all these movements that I'm moving with my keyboard to get out of the maze, uh, the, the, it's going to be done automatically. And the computer's going to be recording how it does it. So I'm going to ask Dakota to try see if she can get out of my maze with a scratch cat. She's got to try get over there. If she can get over there, she wins. All right, let's see Dakota. And I want you to talk while you're doing it. Dakota's going to be talking. See, come on, I'm trying to get it. Come on, Matthew. Okay, so I'm going to go down below the milkshake. Um, that seems to be wrong because they're all dead ends. Um, there. Oh, there. oh, it goes through there. Um, I think it goes up there, down, left, up, left, there. There. Can you see what it's getting through there? Because mine's like gray, it's all black. Where? I'm not trying it. Where's the algae? Um, so we'll have to make it dark, but you guys get the idea of how it works. Yeah. Now, what Matthew's going to do, and Aiden and them, is the computer's going to automatically make little, billions of little balls, and those Lap little dogs. balls are going to try and find their way out. Oh, and no, it's just quiet. That is going to work out how many balls got their way out, how long it took them, and it will be doing and working out yeah. the averages and the mean. The average and all that, it'll be doing it in a display. Yeah, Mr. Bradley, now it's small enough so I can yeah. do the whole right. thing. So I can actually see. If you go through the gray part, it's kind of like cheating. Yeah, exactly. But maybe my maze wasn't so good, but you guys can make yours better. As long as you understand the way it's done, then you guys can construct your own. Like, whoever did that one is brilliant. That maze is brilliant. Mr. Bradley. Miss, Mr. Bradley, I found two mazes for the challenge. You got out. I, and I got out. Uh, they're two, on my computer, there are two mazes on the backdrops. Okay. All right, so let's call that and listen to that. Okay. Basically, what you're going to do, Matthew, is you're going to have like hundreds of little balls. Red yes. Balls balls, and you're all Red balls will maybe maybe sideways. Okay. Maybe it, we fun. can create a clone of the sprite and every time we touch get to the end, we'll make a little block blob so it will pass through there. And every time we touch that blob it will add to a score. So what we'll do is we'll work out the average, how long it takes the red ball to get out of the maze. How long it takes a blue ball to get out of the maze? How yes. long it takes a orange ball to get out of the maze? And yes. And we're working in different mathematical formulas. Yes. Like and the total amount that got out of the maze. So they bounce. Whenever they hit the side, they'll bounce away. Yes. And then that's going to be amazing because the other schools are going to say, wow, when did you use this? Global positioning systems. And we'll go into that aspect of it. Okay. Yeah, well done. We're, we're done with the lesson. Yes, it is. It doesn't matter. We, he can cut this bit off. Mr. Bradley, why did you... We can 
Um, Mr. Bradley, um, why did you have an uh, apple? The what? What's that? The apple. Yeah. It is I was just too lazy to build it. I wanted to put the apple there. When we get to the end of the day, you can put the apple. Uh, we'll make it better. It's just we, we, we want to get the idea at the moment. We'll keep this code because we're going to need to use it. But we now need to make it that the, the balls that we're going to construct are going to be doing it for yourself. I need to offline. It's just those offline. No, I, don't, I mustn't cancel it. I don't want to just go there. Let's just close this. Dakota, did you get everything there? Uh, yeah. I didn't do it. Oh, you didn't do it. Okay, so I want to just basically save this because we need to use this. Um, so file. We'll just save it as in our scratch lessons. And save it on a memory stick because we're going to need to work on it on the weekend. I'll just call it um, Dominican. 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 Helen. Yeah, we're going to use the idea. No, but it's going to be going to be graphs. That it's as the little balls are trying to find their way out. It's going to be recording how long they took. Yeah. And we're going to start from today, like from maybe Monday, till the day the Dominican challenge. We can have our little balls going trying to get out. And then we'll tell them that anyone can go look at our website, and we'll say a million balls have gone from. They've got they found their way out. Uh, of the red balls, there's a million found their way out. Uh, of the blue balls, like 500 only made found their way out because maybe they only bounced forward and backwards. And then um, the we'll say like the yellow balls, maybe 200 got there, found their way out, and we'll work out the average time that it took them to do that. What do you think of that? And then on Monday and Tuesday, you and me will we'll go we'll, with those other girls, we'll go over the graphs to show that there's graphs. Every time I, one of those little balls finds its way out, then the graph will change. And then we'll think about, okay, where's the maths involved? And we'll go, yeah. There's a speech part you and me and um, Aiden and all the rest will work about and make that. How are we going to present that? How are we going to show? We'll put it on the website so that we'll say all the moms and dads who are sitting there, please open your computer or your cell phone and look at our website. There it is. And we'll show. And we'll have to make websites. Well, we'll do that. I'll do that. Exactly. We'll, still, we'll, use a, we'll even make a Dominican Challenge Gmail account for, for our group. Okay. Of course. Are you excited, Matthew? Does yeah. it sound good? Yeah. Remember, we're not going to try to get out of the maze. Yes. The computer balls are running around the game. Mr. Birdie, are we offline now? No, we're Okay. Um, I just need to go to stop the video recording. I thought I did, but I also realized I forgot to. I did. Uh, where exactly is that? There it is. Stop.